Hey there, event marketers. Jessica Heasley here. Welcome to another episode of EM All Access, where we connect you with some of the industry's most innovative events and the marketers behind them. Today's episode is sponsored by GES, a global full service provider of live events. And it focuses on evolving your events small brands and big ones, B2B and B2C, today's event marketers are getting more aggressive about evolving their programs and portfolios. From reinventing strategies to upgrading experiences, refreshing and resetting live events is getting big play these days. I spoke with GES executives Mark Thomas, John Wu, and Jeff Youngs about evolving event programs, making sure the strategy is always up front and matching the message with the experience. Let's listen in. So for event marketers who have created a very successful, uh, strong event portfolio, why should they constantly be thinking about evolving their events? I think everybody should be considering evolving their events consistently, right? Um, evolution isn't something that just stops. If we're focused on the audience and the content and the message that needs to be delivered now as opposed to last year, the event will automatically evolve. You know, it's not necessarily something you need to have on a checklist, you know, evolve event today. You know, that's not really what it's about. It's about responding to the pressures or the challenges, the, the realities of today. It's going to happen automatically. Ultimately, the event evolves because the attendee evolves. The attendee changes. And so what you have to do is you have to take that event and make it suitable and make it appropriate for the attendee. Whatever the content is, whatever the message is, whatever the experience is, what are they looking for? Is there an appropriate place in the process in the development of the strategy or in the annual planning to stop and take a look at where that evolution thinking should be taking place. The strategy should be upfront. And I think, I believe that we should really keep it collaborative. Um, you bring in multidisciplinary teams to think about what you're trying to communicate, the vehicle you're trying to use to communicate the message, and then how it can start to evolve year after year and look at it more holistically rather than saying, I'm going to have an event in Las Vegas and that's what it is because that's what I'm stuck with from a facility standpoint or that's what I have to work with. Uh, we just sometimes tend to get pigeonholed into the physical rather than thinking about how what's best going to deliver the message sometimes. So are there parts of an event that typically need to be refreshed? Are there areas that event marketers should be looking at as um, elements that typically need a fresh perspective from year to year? I think we always look at that as every part of the event should always be refreshed. But it's that ongoing thing is it's an evolution. So when what we're doing today is not necessarily what we did five years ago. What we did five years ago is what we didn't do 10 years ago. So that constant evolution, we have a different audience. We have a different perspective on things. And taking that perspective allows us to be able to tell a different message. So I don't think you can locate it into one separate thing. But we, looking at the overall experience is, I think, what we have to look at to how we refresh everything. Yeah, and it's coming from content. You know, So what's the content of the message? The content really is the king on there. So if you if you focus on the content, then how it's delivered and the ways it's delivered and the timing that it's delivered, those those things will again naturally evolve to, in order to support that content. So if, if if you're focused on really the purpose and why you're there, those things, you know, should it be the general session? Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe it's the expo. Maybe it's the way they interact with one another, and and, and so that the engagement of the of the employee or the attendee. Uh, matches the message a little bit better. And look at it from a different perspective. Maybe step outside of the day-to-day -day execution and really focus more on the team and understand like how you're bringing that collaboration together in order to kind of have the content be delivered to the, to the audience. You brought up the word thinking, which makes me think of design thinking. And it then makes me think that there might be some value to evolution thinking and kind of constantly having that top of mind. Yeah. Is there some value to keeping evolution top of mind as an event marketer. It naturally occurs, so you can't ignore it, right? Um, evolution just happens, whether you want it to or not, <laughs> sometimes to your program. Um, I think design thing is really interesting because it's been around for such a long time, the way that we apply and leverage empathy, um, being able to try things out and then prototype and ultimately fail quickly to learn from it, leads itself to evolution, right? So when we do our events, one of my first questions that we ask our clients is, where's your risk tolerance at? What are you willing to risk and try something new in order to create change? Make that happen on the show floor. And it's very funny because a lot of people will have a very high risk tolerance and some people will be like, yeah, we want all that, but we're not gonna do it, right? So it gets us 
to the answer much faster just by asking that simple question. Um, it's really interesting. I could see a program evolve, so you look at it from a course of five, six years. Um, it, they change because, one, the team's mentality, their perspective starts to change. And the way that they're looking at their events and by going out to other events changes and influences that. So I think that's all part of the evolution process for that. Evolution can be a very positive thing. And so the evolution of a brand or the evolution of a concept will really bring that to fruition. Taking all those elements and bringing that to the content level, bringing that to the strategy level will help evolve that brand. Are there some lessons learned from some of the events that you've recently executed that have helped kind of evolve um, a place where the client was, where they wanted to go. We just recently retained a new client, actually. Somebody had been with another company for 30 years. And we went in, we did discovery sessions with them. And we really asked them questions, very serious questions about what their brand meant. What was their message? How did they want to do things? It wasn't just a tactical execution. It was a really stra a strategic way to think about things. We looked at that program from the perspective of the audience and the message of today with that client and that brand because the previous supplier who had been doing it for decades, as he said, um, wasn't thinking, they were just doing the same thing year after year after year. And the client began to see that that wasn't helping them. Their audiences were dropping, they weren't being as effective as they needed to be. So they came, yep. came to us and we were able to address that for them. And that risk factor that John was talking about is key. And, and some clients don't wanna do that, we get it but we're gonna always present the risk because that's the way to really push the envelope for them and, and break new ground in their, in their communication because that's really what it's all about. What was different about that client was that we actually took a step back and we actually interviewed their entire company in or before we even created the event because it was for an internal facing audience, right? It's not for, it wasn't a uh, consumer facing audience, it was a internal group. So we actually took the time and the step back and spent a month kind of interviewing that entire group from their leadership team, their events team, their marketing team, their product development teams, and we understood what their perspective was. So we gained that empathy and we were able to transform the show because of that. Um, and I don't think we would have gotten there just off of a brief. It sounds like your discovery process is unique to each client, but then also goes where it needs to go in order to get to a place where you can present those risky ideas, uh, maybe to that client that has created something that's working, but, um, might need that nudge. How do you how do you get them to move forward in a place that might be a little bit scary, but they're excited to go to? You got to push them out of the envelope, right? I mean, that's why they ask us to jump in to help them create something. If we just replicated back exactly what they were looking for, then we're not doing our jobs as creatives um, or designers or people that are trying to um, evolve the industry. Let's say, right? Um, I think our task is to help them come out of their safety zone by showing them a safe way of expressing that. It has to be content relevant, it has to be brand on brand, and it has to be uh, respectful of that. But at the same time, you can help people transition by showing them a safe way of expressing that type of risk, being able to take that on. Uh, and many times we just do it through methods of play. So say we're doing the engagement, um, it's not to say, you've, give, you've given me all your information, now I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna do it all on the computer and I'm gonna give it back to you and here you go, here's your pretty picture. I think it's actually the whiteboard sessions. You sit down in a room and you kind of sketch out the ideas loose and rough and fast. You prototype through it and then you can come up with a better solution because you're all involved in that creative process and something that's been missing in this industry for a while. We tend to say, here's the point person, you talk to them, they give you the information. You're playing a game of telephone and designers can't really thrive in that type of environment. So we try to close that gap as tightly as can by putting the designer with the clients getting the multidisciplinary team around it to, to work through those solutions, or those, those problems and challenges. Yeah, and part of what we do as communicators is paint that really good picture of what could be mm -hmm. when we take these risks. And, and, and if, when they're part of it, as John was saying, when they're part of that solution creation, then they can see it more clearly and they're more willing to go. Uh, just handing it to them, a lot of times we'll hit a wall. And uh, if, we can, if we can have them engaged in that process, then, then they're seeing it as we see it. Whether you're evolving some of your events or resetting entire portfolios, it's important to keep an eye on your audience. Use an evolution as an opportunity to drive deeper connection with attendees and drive post-event engagement. I'd like to thank Mark, Jeff, and John for joining me and you for watching.
Learn more about this episode's sponsor, GES, at ges.com, and explore our growing library of EML access conversations and behind-the-scenes tours at eventmarketer.com.